In a world of polymer frames, striker fired pistols, Glocks, M&Ps, why spend four or five times as much on a 2011 or a double stack 1911? We're gonna try to answer that in this video. Partially because you can shoot that fast. Welcome back to Sawtooth Tactical. So I wanted to pose this question. In a world of Glocks, of modern polymer frame, striker fired, simple, reliable, fairly accurate pistols, why would you choose a 2011? It's a lot more complicated, it does have some drawbacks, and it's way more expensive. But it also has a lot of pros compared to those cons. So we're gonna talk about that today. Make sure you subscribe to Sawtooth Tactical, and let's get started. One thing about 2011s, speed and accuracy is the name of the game. <laughs> and 20 round magazines. So to get started, this technically isn't a 2011, it's a Springfield Prodigy Double Stack 1911, and that's because Staccato has trademarked the term 2011. And this technically isn't a Glock. It's a Palmetto State Armory Dagger, which is a Gen 3 Glock clone. They're both very good representations of what we're talking about though today. Whether this is technically a 2011 or not, it is a 2011. And whether this is technically a Glock or not, it's the same damn thing. So, they're perfect representations of what we're talking about, and it's what I have available to me, because these are both guns that I own. In fact, these are my two most recent pistol purchases. And as much as I loved building out this Glock clone, and I like this pistol a lot, Ever since I got the 2011, or the Springfield Prodigy, it makes me want to shoot my other pistols less and less because this pistol is so much fun to shoot. But first, we're going to talk about some of the cons to the 2011 platform. There is something to be said for the simplicity of a Glock. This is a PSA Dagger. It's a Gen 3 Glock clone. Simple. Keep it simple, stupid does work and they are reliable so the big thing with glocks is simplicity and while this one doesn't look quite as simple as a lot of glocks being that it's got you know the red dot the light the threaded barrel aftermarket trigger aftermarket mag release whatever, you know, cuts in the slide, all this stuff. It's because I, I built it out as a custom one. But it still has the exact same operating system, the same general mechanics as your basic Glock. And there's a lot to be said for simplicity. Like, uh, you know, the phrase, keep it simple, stupid. Well, Glock does that very, very well. It's a very simple platform. There's not a lot of parts to it. And that has a lot to do with its reliability. There's a lot less things that can possibly go wrong. Whereas with the 2011, it is a much more complicated firearm. And for one, you know, breaking down a Glock or just field stripping it, very easy. That's about it. And you're ready to clean it, do whatever you need to do to it. But the thing is, you don't even need to clean it that often, and it'll even run on a very minimal amount of lubrication. The 2011, on the other hand, has a little bit more complicated of a breakdown. This one in particular, you have to use an Allen wrench to uh, you know, break apart your two-piece guide rod. Um, but after that, to me, it's very simple, but I've also been shooting 1911s for a long time, and the breakdown is very similar. Um, it's a little bit different with this one because 
once you pull the slide off, you do have to like hold the recoil assembly together while you unscrew the two piece guide rod, pull out your reverse plug, all that. You've got a barrel with a linkage that your takedown lever slash slide stop slide release has to go through. It is a bit more complicated than a Glock. And so it does take a little bit of getting used to if you haven't ran 1911s or 2011s before and you haven't maintained them. It definitely just takes a little bit more knowledge, a little bit more finesse to figure out how to care for these. And when it comes to caring for them, like I said, Glocks are known to be able to run thousands of rounds between cleanings. You really can pretty much run them dry. I wouldn't recommend that with this kind of firearm. With a 1911 or a 2011, you want to maintain it um, to a much higher degree. So I pretty much take this thing apart, clean it, and oil it after every 100 rounds. Now, you don't really have to do it that often, but I feel like might as well keep it in tip-top shape, make sure that it's gonna be reliable as well, because if you care for your 2011, it will be perfectly reliable, just like any other gun. So one of the big advantages to the Glock platform is the wide availability of parts and magazines. You always hear the phrase, does it take Glock mags? Well, yes, it does. <laughs> if it goes into battery. It sure does run. So one of the things, again, about the Glock is you have parts compatibility. So this is a Gen 3 Glock clone. There are more aftermarket parts for Glocks than any other handgun. It's like the AR-15 of pistols. And that includes magazines. You always hear the phrase, does it take Glock mags? Well, Glock mags are easy to find. I run actual Glock OEM, you know, branded mags, but there's a lot of companies that make Glock mags. You can even, you know, it'll take a 33 round stick mag and it'll run it just fine. Now, when it comes to the 2011 platform, you know, standard 20 round magazines are pretty dang sweet. You can even get a 26 round magazine for this. And they have kind of standardized 2011 magazines um, in the recent years. You know, this same Prodigy will run staccato magazines. And there are lots of different 2011s out there that will run basically the same kind of magazines. Um, but there have been issues with magazine reliability in 2011s. I think at this point, most of those issues have been worked out. I have had zero issues with any of the magazines that I have for this Prodigy. But those issues can be there. So despite all the uh, things you have to deal with as far as maintenance and just... The added technicality of the 1911-2011 kind of setup, especially in 9mm, they are just a joy to shoot. <laughs> so much fun. Now that simplicity goes to shooting as well. When you shoot a Glock, there are no safeties to speak of, or at least no manual safeties. There's no thumb safety, no grip safety. There are internal safeties, and there's generally a trigger blade safety so that you can't hold the trigger unless you actually have a good you know, finger on the trigger there. But that's basically it. It's a point and shoot kind of weapon. Well, a 1911, a 2011 is not the same way. For one, you do have a manual safety. This one is a um, Ambi manual thumb safety. And one of the things about that, it actually helps. So the correct way to shoot one of these is you actually ride your thumb on top of that thumb safety and use it as a gas pedal to help control recoil. 
which when it comes to reach recoil, it's very, very minimal. And that's one of the pros that we're about to get to here. There's also a grip safety. And this has to be defeated as well. You notice even with the manual safety on fire, the trigger will not pull until that grip safety has been depressed. And so you have to make sure that when you're coming out of the holster that you get a proper grip on a 1911-2011 in order to defeat that grip safety. And then at the same time, you have to turn your manual safety off, put it on fire before you can take a shot. The thing is, once you get good at that, you're gonna get a really good grip on it every single time. It just takes a little bit of getting used to. You'll get used to just sweeping off that thumb safety. In fact, I've been shooting this pistol so much lately that it's almost weird to me now to not have a thumb safety when I shoot some of my other handguns. So you defeat that grip safety, you defeat the thumb safety, and then the beautiful part happens you have this amazing trigger. And the trigger on a 1911 or a 2011 is what makes it so good. You see that little bit of take up there? And it's a very short, very crisp break with an extremely short reset. And that's what makes these guns so amazing, or at least part of what makes them so amazing. You can really shoot them fast and you can shoot them very accurate. And that's what's so fun about them. The recoil on something like this, you know, it's a bigger, heavier gun generally than a Glock because there's just more steel in it. <laughs> you know, this, this thing is made out of mostly plastic. Now this does have a polymer grip module, but it's got a steel frame, steel slide, steel barrel. It's fairly heavy and it recoils very, very little. And with such a light, fast, easy trigger, I've measured this trigger again last night, it's pulling at about 3.8 pounds average right now, sometimes four, sometimes 3.6. And that's a heavy trigger for a 2011. And, but it's just, it's crisp and it's just easy to go fast. And the, the sights on something like this. So this has a blacked out rear with a U-notch with a fiber optic front sight, which is about my favorite kind of sighting system. If you're not running a red dot, the red dot makes it that much easier. With the amount of recoil that you get from this, you can basically shoot it as fast as you want once you get used to how it returns onto you, your target. You can just watch that red dot bounce up and down a little bit and every time it comes back down on your target, you can pull the trigger again, meaning that you could put rounds on target very quickly, very accurately, very easily. And that is the beauty of the 2011. When you have a pistol this big and heavy, shooting around like nine millimeter, it's just a joy to shoot. There's such little recoil that you could just control the pistol very well, get rounds on target very quickly. This Springfield Prodigy, I am very happy with it. Yeah, this thing is awesome. To me, there's something to be said that John Moses Browning's pistol design from over a century ago, the meaning the 1911, in its most modernized form, meaning the 2011, is widely now considered to be, you know, pretty much the best handguns you can get. Now, you know, CZ Shadow 2s, there, there's some other great handguns out there, don't get me wrong. Me being a 1911 lover, I absolutely love the 2011 because it takes all of the benefits of the 1911, but it gives you that modern double stack capacity. And shooting a 1911 in 9mm, as I've said many times before, is just a pleasure to shoot. It recoils so little, it just it's just so soft shooting, and you can keep it on target, you can shoot it very quickly, you can shoot it very accurately. 
and it, and it's extremely reliable as well. I know people had problems with these Springfield Prodigies when they first came out. The original batch of them had a lot of issues. Well, I waited and I got mine after they'd worked out those issues. I've put, I think, 600 rounds through it now. I'm trying to get to that 1,000 round mark and we will do a 1,000 round review of it. But this thing has been perfectly, perfectly reliable. In fact, it's been more reliable than my Glock clone. And so, despite a couple of drawbacks, just meaning that, you know, that it's a little bit more complicated to use and to maintain, the benefits that you get out of it are well worth it, in my opinion. I recommend that anybody that feels like they can afford to get into the 2011 platform. And that's the other point of this video is more and more people are gonna be able to afford to. So Springfield kind of broke that glass ceiling when they released the Prodigy. It was kind of the first mass produced, you know, 2011 that was at a fairly affordable price point. Now, when I say affordable, it's a $1,500 pistol before you put a red dot and a light on it or do anything else to it. So it's not cheap by any means. When you can get something like this, minus red dot and light obviously, for about 500 bucks, that's three times as much. And this is the cheaper 2011 on the market. But the thing is, there are more affordable 2011s coming out, specifically this year in 2023, Bull Armory has some, from what I'm seeing, really, really amazing 2011s that are just a little bit more expensive than the Prodigy, but less expensive than a Staccato and much less expensive than like an Atlas or an Infinity or something. Um, there is also the Stealth Arms Platypus just came out. It's actually a 2011 that takes Glock magazines. And there's a number of other ones coming out. Um, I think like t sauce or something. There's a Turkish line of 2011s coming out. And those are going to be actually much cheaper than the Prodigy. So we're coming into a day and age where 2011s are going to start to be much more affordable, much more attainable for the average gun owner that's not extremely wealthy. And to me, that is a good thing. I always wanted a 2011, but it was hard for me to justify spending that many thousands of dollars just on the base pistol before putting things like optics, lights, and the necessary, in my opinion, upgrades. That was just a lot to spend on a gun. But when the Prodigy came out, that got me very excited. And I was right to be excited about it. I absolutely love this Springfield Prodigy. And this, this isn't even a high-end 2011. I can honestly only imagine how good shooting a Staccato is, how good shooting an Atlas, an Infinity, a Nighthawk Custom, a Wilson Combat. There are some amazing 2011 manufacturers out there that I can't wait to get my hands on. So speaking of which, <laughs> support the channel in any way you can. I'm gonna leave a link to my Patreon down below. Maybe we can get some of those guns in here on the channel to review. I think that would be awesome for me. And I think it'd be awesome for you guys as well. So if you like this video, please like, share, and comment. Do you run a 2011? Are you a Glock fanboy? What do you like to use? Do you agree with my take on this or not? Let me know. I respond to every comment. Make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell because I post three videos every single week. And uh, yeah, love you guys. From Sati Tactical, stay strapped or get clapped.